Hello, and welcome to Gus McDowell's Strategy and Tactics, and thank you to our subscribers. In this series, we use the missions in the game Firefight to illustrate one or more aspects of World War II infantry tactics at the company level and below. In this campaign, we're playing through the Battle of France as the French, with eight battles over the course of May and June 1940. Everyone knows about the historical outcome, a French operational and strategic defeat at the hands of the Germans. But I want to see if the French, using historical weapons tactics and doctrine, can defeat the Germans at the tactical level. In this episode, Il ne passeront pas Hill 112, strike back at the invading German army in a bid to halt their gathering momentum. Hill 112 dominates the area of a range of rolling hills, making it a strategically important feature. Small farms and woods dot the gentle slopes of the hills. Each episode we conduct basic mission analysis, develop and analyse possible courses of action, then decide and execute the plan in real time, followed by lessons learned. Please remember to like the video and subscribe for more great strategy and tactics content. And if you want to buy me a coffee, the links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. The Germans are encircling our forces near Dunkirk. We must stop the Germans long enough to buy time for an evacuation. This is a map of the battle space, overlain with terrain features in red. If you're interested, these maps are available in the game folder. The area is dominated by a series of successive ridgelines, marked here with white dotted lines. The Germans hold ridgelines A and B to the north, including Hill Woman 2 and the adjacent village. Ridgeline C, along with the village and orchard, is no man's land. The French hold ridgeline D and the farm. East-west roads follow the low ground between the ridges. The hilltops and ridgelines provide observation and fields of fire over the intervening valleys. Hill 112 has a commanding view of the area. Ridgeline C provides some cover on the reverse slope against the orchard. The small woods, or coops, provide concealment for infantry. There are no major obstacles to movement, However, any troops moving over the open ground on the ridge lines, in the valleys and on the forward slopes are vulnerable to direct and indirect fire, and this presents an obstacle to movement. Unsurprisingly, the ridge lines are key terrain. Hill 112 is decisive terrain and dominates the area. There is really only one avenue of approach, over the ridge lines and up the forward slope. This is classic defensive terrain. A lot of First World War battlefields look just like this. The Germans on the high ground, the Allies in the low ground opposite, no man's land in between. The Germans would place machine gun nests and fighting positions in the wooded coops on the forward slopes, with a forward machine gun post delivering enfilade fire on anyone traversing the open low ground. Over time, artillery fire would reduce villages and woods to mere ruins. Trenches would be dug between fighting positions to allow the covered and concealed movement of troops and supplies. The trenches themselves would be prepared for defence, with firing steps and overhead protection. Administrative and sleeping areas would be dug in on the reverse slope, away from enemy artillery. I'm assuming the Germans will adopt a similar defensive layout, minus the trench lines of course. Infantry in the woods, a machine gun delivering enfilade fire down the roads in the low ground, direct fire support on the high ground, and indirect fire support on the reverse slope. The open ground between ridgelines B and C is the killing zone. I do not know the forces at my disposal until the mission starts. From previous battles, I will assume I have some infantry squads with machine guns, a mortar, and some armour. There really is only one thing to do. This terrain calls for the bataille conduite, or the methodical battle. Push the armour to the flanks to provide overlapping fields of fire from their machine guns and cannon. Move from ridgeline D to seize the reverse slope of ridgeline C as the intermediate objective. Use smoke to blind any units delivering enfilade fire until they can be isolated and destroyed. Win the firefight against the enemy around ridgeline B and use cover and concealment where possible to move across the valley floor to take that ridgeline. The woods to the left, the village in the centre, and the hill to the right. Then, with the enemy suppressed or neutralised, storm the hill under cover of artillery bombardment of enemy positions. 
The real question is how to do this without suffering World War I level casualties. Title 11 Miscellaneous Knowledge Having Application in Combat. Chapter 5 Study and Identification of Terrain. In an offensive hypothesis, the instructor shows the students the interest of reaching the dominant parts of the terrain in order to establish the fire support vehicles which will always be well placed there to support subsequent movement, and to use parts hidden from the adversary to move from one objective to another while reducing visibility and vulnerability as much as possible. Let's position our forces for battle. There is the primary objective, Hill 112, and the intermediate objective, the ridgeline. Let's review our forces using the information panel on the bottom right of the screen. This shows soldier statistics and vehicle controls. Unit 1 is a Renault R35 with a 37mm SA-18 gun and rifle machine gun. It is commanded by Lieutenant Renaudan. He is in overall command of the operation. Unit 2 is a Shah D1 light tank with a 47mm SA-34 gun and rifle machine gun. It is commanded by Sajan Alad. Unit 3 is an infantry section, commanded by Sergeant Louis. The section has an FM2429 light machine gun, Bertier Model 1916 carbines, Mass 36 rifles, F1 grenades, and a VB grenade launcher with 12 rounds. Unit 4 is a Schneider AMC P16 half-track with a turreted 37mm gun and rifle machine gun. It is commanded by Sous Lieutenant Didier. Unit 5 is an infantry section commanded by Sergeant Bachelet. Unit 6 is an infantry section, commanded by Sergeant Lebert. Unit 7 is an infantry section, commanded by Sous Lieutenant Page. Unit 8 is an anti-tank rifle team, commanded by Caporal Bonin. The team is armed with a 55 caliber boys anti-tank rifle. As it turns out, we don't have a mortar. And so we begin. Sous Lieutenant Page moves his section forward to clear the coop and get a look at the village. The P-16 half-track moves up, ready to provide fire support.
so Jean Bachelet's section crosses the road to take position in the orchard. As does Sergeant Lebert's section. The orchard is on the reverse slope of the ridge line, the intermediate objective. The sections move forward to clear the orchard. Contact. Heavy fire. The Germans occupy the village. Anti-tank gun. On the hill to the right. The P-16 opens fire. Open fire! The P-16 is hit on the hull upper right by an HE shell. They are lucky to survive. The P-16 wisely withdraws. The anti-tank gun on the hill is a 3.7cm Panzerabwehrkanon. Open fire! Sergeant Bachelet's section comes under machine gun fire from the north. Another German position in the woods on the forward slope of Hill 112. The French call in a fire mission on the anti-tank gun. Requesting artillery. It has an excellent field of fire into the low ground, stopping the tanks moving forward to suppress the German infantry. Open fire! Sous Lieutenant Page tells his men to fall back. P-16 can't directly target the anti-tank gun because of the hedge. But it can put in suppressing fire. Another German position on the left flank, covering down the road in the low ground. This will be a tough fight. The Shah D1 does not have a good shot at the anti-tank gun. Open fire! Sous Lieutenant Page's section is getting hammered by fire from the village and from the anti-tank gun. It looks like the Germans are in a classic two-up, one-back defensive formation, supported by an anti-tank gun and another unit, possibly a tank. 
the positions are well sited to provide mutual support and overlapping fields of fire. Right now, the fields of fire overlap on Sergeant Bachelet's section, and Bachelet is wounded by a bullet. As is sold up Blondeau from Sergeant Lebert's section. The French shift the artillery fire to the village to suppress the Germans. Sergeant Allard's Char D1 also shifts fire to the village. Lieutenant Renaudin's Renault R35 moves to support the left flank. The French infantry are pinned in the coop and the orchard. Open fire! They cannot advance under the murderous crossfire. Open fire! The tanks need to move forward to suppress the German infantry, but they can't do that until the anti-tank gun is eliminated. So I need a plan. Sergeant Louis moves across open ground to the right flank. His section will sweep around to the right, outflank the gun, and kill the crew. Then the tanks can advance to the intermediate objective. So Lieutenant Page's section is pinned in the coop and unable to help. The Char D1 moves onto the hilltop to get a better view. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Renaudin has spotted an opportunity. Using the ridgeliner's terrain shielding from the main German defensive position, he can move his Renault R35 to bring fire onto the German infantry on the left.
Sergeant Louis's section seems reluctant to leave the safety of their reverse slope position. He yells at them to move. Caporal Bonin's anti-tank rifle team also moves forward to occupy the hut. Both tanks shuffle for better firing positions. Artillery in the distance, not ours. A German shell lands near Sergeant Louis' section. They are exposed in the open and need to move fast. Lieutenant Renaudin's R-35 opens fire on the German infantry. Caporal Bow is killed by a mortar shell blast in the chest. Sergeant Louis' section is being mortared and under artillery fire. Move or die. Soldat Guerin is killed by an artillery shell blast in the chest. Louis continues to exhort his men to move. Another mortar round incoming. Caporal Lavin and Soldat Maillard are killed by an artillery shell blast in the chest. Soldat Boudet is severely wounded by shrapnel in the chest. The men cowering in the open are being slowly killed off. In the distance, the German guns boom out their barrage. 
Last chance for Louis' men to follow orders or die. The rounds slam in, but the survivors of Louis' section have moved on, and there are no further casualties. However, Sergeant Bachelet is wounded by a bullet in the abdomen. His section is under crossfire. This is a good time to pause the action for now and come back to the battle in the next episode. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and donate, and stay tuned for the next episode.